October 31, 2007. It was Halloween. It was just crazy. I got the phone call from our supervisor of health services. And this was unique. Sue said we have a situation. Houston, we have a problem. It wasn't a pretty sight. School officials won't speculate. They're just trying to mobilize crews right now to start sanitizing the schools. I had never seen anything like that. Nobody knew what it was. And I hope we never see that again. At first, uh, some teachers wondered if it could be a prank. It was a holiday, trick or treat. But then, kids started getting really sick. And suddenly, Halloween at Starbuck Middle School took on a totally different tone. It was basically just a normal day. I went into the lunch line. And I got the soft shell tacos that day, had my lunch. Everything was fine up until the start of study center. Noticed right away that I started to feel a little bit dizzy. It's just something that kind of hit me, kind of like a brick. I received a phone call from Starbuck Middle School. She said, I have, I need help. I have children going down the hall. Normally, you don't see 27 students uh, sitting in front of the nurse's office throwing up. To have a line the length of a school is remarkable. What do we need to do to protect the health and safety of all the kids in the school, and for that matter, all the kids in the district? What they were seeing in the halls wasn't the only thing that bothered them. What really worried them is, why was this happening? Why were so many kids getting so violently ill? I mean, kids getting sick all over the place. Either they had nausea. The mess was right here. Vomiting. Walking around with the hand over their mouth. It was amazing. By the time officials closed down the school that day, more than 70 students and staff had gotten sick. I've been doing school nursing since 1999, and I've never seen anything like that before. It was a, a whole lot of kids in a very short period of time, all feeling pretty cruddy. One of the kids at the school, a seventh grader, felt like he was being hit in the stomach again and again and again. The officials who saw this happening knew they had to figure out what was going on, and they had to figure it out fast. I literally went up the line of asking children what they ate. First thing that came to mind is this an epidemic? Because th this might be uh, uh, something a little bit more serious than, than a case of the flu going around. I was talking to a lot of the students and some of them are saying, I had soft shell tacos today and I'm thinking, you know what, that's what I had too and I normally do not get that. It would take days for school officials to determine that tacos, in particular the tortillas, were the cause of the illnesses. And in fact, the mystery lasted longer than most of the symptoms. About 20 minutes later, um, after I was starting to feel the symptoms, they went away. Fortunately, it seemed to be something that was fairly short-lived. So short-lived that many of the kids who got sick were out trick-or-treating later that night. That said, it's the kind of Halloween that they won't soon forget at Starbuck Middle School. It's one of those things that has just stuck with me, that I'm just staying away from the tacos. Yeah, it was a very exciting day at Starbuck, to say the least. Susan Seidenspinner wants to know why her daughter's friends were vomiting in class. About 90 kids took ill with nausea and stomach cramping Wednesday afternoon. We sanitized locker fronts, doorknobs, doors front and back, um, handrails. Health officials still have no answers. This was something that we needed to get to the bottom of with these children. There was some suspicion that this might involve uh, might involve food. On a basic lunch, you're given this tray of food. So, you know, after you've gone through what the basic tray was, then you try to discern which items may be potential sources. Or it might involve some kind of virus or germs that had gotten into our, our system here. The school was investigating, and so were Racine Health Authorities. And everything they looked at pointed back to one thing. It looked like it was the tacos involved in some way and that we needed to suspend the serving of that. Outbreaks had happened before a scene at a dozen schools in two different states in 2003, 2004, 2005, and 2006. I did find out that you know, there were other incidents that, that did cause um, children to become sick. In each of those cases, tortillas made at Del Rey Torteria in Chicago were to blame. This is not the way we do our product. You know, we don't get people sick. Tortillas are not a inherently hazardous food. Our product is, you know, to be out there to be ate, to, you know, to enjoy. They uh, are not susceptible to microbiological growth. We did discover that 
Delray tortillas were, were served on that day. So another recall was issued, a voluntary one also again. The trouble was no one could say precisely what it was about the tortillas that was making kids sick. Everything came out normal levels. So then again, the second time we were, you know, we were just questioning what could be going on. It wasn't just that Del Rey couldn't pinpoint the problems, neither could the FDA. They convened a panel of top scientists to look at prior outbreaks, and still, they couldn't determine what it was about the tortillas that was making kids sick. Inspectors had found problems in Del Rey's facilities, and after ordering the recall in Racine, they began to take action. But it wouldn't be until 17 months after the Racine outbreak that they would temporarily close Del Rey and make it fix its problems. Since the recalls have happened, we've lost like 40 to 45 percent in, in sales and production. Our product has been made, you know, for 50 years, and we're just here to please the customer. Our customer always comes first. The FDA declined to come on camera to talk about the case, but its inspectors have been back to Del Rey this year, and the plan is now passing muster. Now, it's up to the family-owned business to try to regain the customers that it lost. Our customers are like our family. We live in an urban society. We have less control over things. Today a tortilla, maybe tomorrow spinach again. Who knows?